All right, guys, it's officially 2021, and with the start of a new year, it's always nice to break out some new financial goals. So we are going to be covering that in this video. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Justine with <laughs> Your little head bobs. <laughs> Crushing your debt, living payment free is what we're here for. Uh, my name is Justine. This is my husband, Kyle. Hey. And we are going to be talking about our financial goals for this year. We've got some big ones. We accomplished a lot last year. Surprisingly. I think a lot of people have been surprised by last year. <laughs> yeah. So we're just wanting to snowball on top of those accomplishments, which we will get into now. Okay, number one, we want a second car. We have been a one car family for a long time. It has worked out really well for us. Saving money on not having a second car has been huge. Like the average monthly car expense is four to $600. That's including depreciating value, car maintenance, gas, fuel, insurance, all of those things. So we've avoided having a second car. We have another parking spot in our building that we rented out for an extra $150 a month. So that's been extra income. So we would lose that at the same time. But we have a baby on the way. We have a baby on the way. So if Justine needs to go take the little boy or girl, we don't know yet. Uh, to a doctor's appointment, it's going to be very helpful for us to just the convenience factor there for her to just jump in the car and go. So we have, how much do we have right now in our? $25,000. And what is our goal amount? $35,000. And 35. that includes like taxes and expenses and fees and licensing and inspections and all that stuff. Okay. When should we have this fully funded by? In the end of the year, at least. And the baby's due in six weeks. So I'm hoping that in eight weeks we'll have this funded. Okay. So Maybe 10. let's call it in two months, we're talking about five grand per month. Yeah. Whoa. But we just. If you watch some of our beers and budgeting episodes, you'll see I had some automatic contributions and manual contributions that did not get added uh, for January. So I feel like we're at like twenty eight thousand. Yeah, I feel like we'll be super, super close. I think we could hit this by April for sure. OK, so let's give April, us a little May. fudge factor. Let's say by June. So halfway through this year. Yeah, I like that. We'll be at thirty five K. I like that. Okay. okay, that's goal number one. Goal number two, increasing the down payment fund again. <laughs> so if you watched my video on how to negotiate your rent, even during a pandemic, that's exactly what we did. And knowing how our lease agreement ended and aligned with when the baby's due date is, we had no desire to try to move, find a house and hurry and rush that process. We want to take our time, especially because this is the very first home that we will be purchasing. So what we did is we ended up renewing our lease at the same exact rent amount, which is awesome. And that buys us basically the rest of the year to really look for that house if that ends up playing out. So we have way more run, runway to increase the down payment fund. And we are talking about making this a regular contribution of $2,000 per month. So we are talking about adding an additional $24,000 towards the down payment this year. Yep. Now, are we pausing any retirement funds to do that? No. That's right. We are contributing to retirement and then adding to the down payment. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that we can't max out and keep going with the retirement accounts because that is still something we need to do. But because the down payment and the second car fund are more short-term goals, that's why we're focusing more money on those goals. 
once the car is funded, we can snowball that savings into more towards the down payment or more towards retirement or both. Awesome. So I like to stair step the financial goals. I think this is a good approach for us. So at the end of the year, if we made, if we got to like 150 K in our down payment, I, w- I would That'd be, be blown re- away. Yeah. And right now we are sitting at just shy of 125,000. So if the markets continue to go the way that they did in the last year, which is like a total gamble, we should easily be able to accomplish that. But if we have another bubble, it might be a different story. Yes. And you should definitely check out our video on how we saved the first $100,000 in our down payment. I will link to that video up here so that you can check that out because we do have some of that money set aside in some bond index funds. And that video that video explains how we do that. Um, I think that sounds like a really good goal. Okay. Number three, go for it. Maxing out my Roth IRA. So right now I contribute just $200 per month and in order to really max that out, we'll need to contribute $500 a month. And that's because the max contribution limits in a year towards a Roth IRA is $6,000. Divide that out by 12, $500 a month. So I think once we get the second car fund done, then we can go and look at maxing out the Roth. That's one of our snowballs. Yeah. Maxing out the Roth is part of that trickle down or dis- yes. redistribution of yeah. contributions. Yeah. I say that we meet again in June and so like halfway through the year, June, July and see what, where we're at. Okay. Okay. Other investing goal. All right. Ish. Number four. We are going to increase our contributions to a 529 plan. 529. If you haven't heard of this, it is a investment area that's designed for education. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the easiest way to sum it up, I would say. Now, there's a couple different things. 529 is not your only path, but the idea is that it works like a Roth. Once you put money in and you can use it for educational expenses like tuition or housing books Mm -hmm. uh, a number of different things and that can start when they're young like for private schools like in third grade kind of thing yeah now now you can use the money for k-12 through expenses where it used to just be for higher education yep so right well we contributed three grand almost three years ago (laughs) to it and and were we trying for a kid back then no, we just started one because we knew eventually someday we did want to have kids. And I'm super type A. Yeah, imagine that. So now it's at $4,400 and we haven't contributed anything since then. So we've gained $1,400 by just starting it. That feels pretty good at the end of the day to be like, hey, there's an extra 1400 bucks that you didn't have before. I'd take that any day. If you have that much money laying around, you can call me. I'll, I'll take it right now. So... We're going to increase that contribution and say, let's do $100 a month. Yeah, I was thinking. Maybe $200. Wow. I don't know. I don't love the kids that much. Yeah, do you hear this? All right. I think you said earlier, let's meet in June. After the Jeep fund is fully funded, Mm -hmm. let's come back to June. Yes. And we'll talk about this being part of that redistribution, including your Roth now the 529 plan is added. Yeah, my initial thought was at minimum $50 a month. So that that's kind of what I was thinking, but yeah, I I'd say, I'd say that can be back burner while we focus on the first two goals. I'd also like to say that I have no idea what education is going to look like by the time our kid gets there. I mean, that's literally 18, 19 years from now. It could be completely revamped. It's extremely, extremely expensive now, even in the short term. Like in the past five years, it's gotten dramatically more expensive. In Mm. 10 years, it's gotten unbelievably more expensive. Yeah. So it could look completely different. It could be a bubble that we're in right now. There could be a whole bunch of different tech schools. Uh, I don't know what they want to do. They might just want to be a programmer. In that case, it's a six-month trade school to be a programmer. If they want to be... 
an entrepreneur and maybe they start their own. Yeah, it's hard to predict. Yeah. But I know that whatever they want to do after high school, it's probably going to take some form of education. And the 529 plan can help them take a class, a training, whatever that they need to, to try to get closer to their goals. So. Yes. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Can I take this one? Yes. Number five. Number five. We are going to increase my Robin Hood experiments. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So last the past two years, I've done very well in Robinhood. I've averaged 44% return on my Robinhood investments through a method that I've developed specifically for myself for a few specific investments that I pay attention to. And I'm saying it like that on purpose because I'm not going to tell you because we're not investors. We're not some kind of in financial firm. I found something that works for me and has only worked for the past two years. And however, you did mention those two strategies that you you have used to build up your Robinhood account in a different video, which we, we will link to up here and in the description box below for you to check out two strategies that really helped you boost your investments like over 100% return. 132% return. Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm going to stick with those same strategies, but we have doubled the amount. My goal for 2021 was actually to get to $10,000, and we're in February, and I already accomplished that. So we're going to put more money. We're going to put another ten grand into that and see where I'm at by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So we had extra money in our savings account that was just kind of sitting there, and I was like, is this money working the best for us in this account I think we could do better so this was something that we sat down and seriously discussed because ten thousand dollars is a lot of money I mean to us this is a lot of money and so we both agreed that it is a risk we could lose it yep we could very well actually I would be the one losing it <laughs> yeah. and so <laughs> We really have to be careful about putting our money in investments like like that. Yeah, I don't YOLO anything on GameStop. I, I'm fairly conservative. Yes, but I have every faith that you you will be a good money manager with that ten thousand dollars. I can't wait. Hmm. We'll have to check back in and do another video and see how you do with it. Yeah, I know. kind of maybe a quarterly thing. Um, and Robinhood has worked out very well for you. So if you guys are interested in checking out Robinhood for the first time, you can sign up using our affiliate link below and get your first stock free. What else? I think that's pretty much it. I would like to try some new investing experiments, maybe not on the same scale as you, like $10,000, but I've been using Betterment as a experiment platform and I've really liked that platform. Uh, I did $50 every single month last year and was able to get, I think I did like 15% overall return, maybe less than that. That's really good. So. I would like to see you try more platforms. Different I, platforms? I would like to see you try Weeble. I would like to see you try Yada and see what else is going on with high yield savings accounts like Ally. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of things to, to new platforms to look at in 2021. Cool. I would love to do a new investing experiment challenge. If you have an idea for me to try, it's going to be on the smaller scale, maybe something like 50 to 100 bucks per month, or maybe I can just throw $500 or $1,000 and see what happens. Comment below and let me know what you would like to see and... It could be a little interesting melting pot that we got going on. Yeah. All right. So between those really five goals, I'd say that's, that, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge that we are in a very good spot. A lot of you watching this video, your financial goal might be to save enough money to buy new tires. Um, we, we recognize that we are doing well. And that we have, the reason we're doing well is because we've worked hard. We've been together for over a decade. And we remember when we were living in Section 8 housing um, in 
our our rent was seven hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So it it can happen. Uh, I encourage you to stick with it and focus on it. And it's tough, and the road is long, and it can be defeating and frustrated. But try to keep your head up. Try to find someone who's an accountability partner. Maybe it's a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, a friend, whoever, that you can just sit down and have a drink and talk about money with and say, this is what I'm frustrated with. And what worked for you? Or like looking up a, a new recipe to save yourself money to uh, on the grocery bill or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you're the opposite of us on the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you're looking at our our financial goals and saying that's jump change if that's the case good for you you don't need to watch the rest of this video I'm surprised you made it this far (laughs) but either way wherever you're at in the spectrum of saving money make goals yeah the important takeaway here is to make goals have them be specific $35,000 by June like That's very specific. So if you are working on your debt-free journey and working to get out of debt, I have a whole playlist called How to Get Out of Debt um, that you should definitely binge watch and go through those videos because all of those techniques and strategies that I talk about in those videos is exactly how I was able to pay off $35,000 in student loan debt in just under two and a half years, making an average of $37,000 per year in salary. So very small income, it can be done. And because I worked my butt off doing that, (laughs) it has afforded us to start our marriage debt-free. You paid off your student loans because you were extremely good at saving. And you had enough savings to pay off your student loans. Yep. And we were able to really kickstart and grow our finances together because we made those sacrifices of living in section eight housing. Uh, I drove a car without a bumper for a very long time. I remember that. <laughs> uh, bringing lunches to work, really sticking to a budget budget. Number one tool that helped me get out of debt. Absolutely. Yep. And that's why we still do budgeting every single month because it also helps you with your financial goals. And it helps me drink beer. <laughs> and we drink beer while we do it. Cheers and Okay. Let us know in the comments below, what is one financial goal you have for this year? Big or small, I would love to know. And the entire community can back you and keep you accountable to those goals so that we can check back in with each other and say, yep, hit it. Or nope, I need some help. And we can talk about all those things. Okay. Let's crush it. All right. 2021. I'll see you in June. Yep. Or Or tomorrow. tomorrow. (laughs) I think we just ended there.